Hi there, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out of the UK, around the world, into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, I hope you like what you hear. I hope you share it with friends and I hope you subscribe. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about how you can say yes to something without realising it and how you can feel put upon after a while and how people actually manipulate you into saying yes when you don't really want to without being direct. Now sometimes, um, so well I'm going to give you an example. Um, I got an email about two weeks ago, sometimes I work for this, well not work, but I, um, I volunteer for this little community group and the other day I got an email and the email said um, we need someone for reception to cover reception and it listed out all the names of the people who were helping out and then it said um, there are two more spaces I'm going to ask Myrna and I'm going to ask this other person if they can fill it. Underneath, note for Myrna, can you fill this spot? Can you cover reception? Now, that person could have come over to me and said, look, um, we need some, we need someone to help with reception. Can you, can you help out? And I probably would have said, yeah, of course. But the way she did it, it was almost like emotional blackmail. She worded that email in a way to make me say yes. By, no, by no, notifying me of all the people who have said yes. And, only, and there's two spots and there's only me and one other. You know, I just got so peed off. Because that's how people cajole you into saying yes. Now, if I wasn't alert, I would have gone into my guilt mode and thought, oh, yeah, I better help out. Everybody else is helping out. It looks bad if I don't help out. But I knew what she was doing and I refused to be manipulated. And I just said to her, I've got too much things to do. I just wrote back, I've got too much to do. I can't help out on reception. And when you, um, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes people like that are in your lives all the time and you don't know. You don't know why you're saying yes to certain situations and then you find that you're overloaded. You feel run down, you feel exhausted and you don't know why. It's our culture to be helpful, to be um, polite, not to rock the boat, to keep up with the status quo. And a lot of people, especially controlling people, exploit that part of our nature. And all I'm saying, peeps, is that think before you say yes. Why am I saying yes? Do I really want to do what they're asking me to do? Who is it benefiting? And I'm not saying that everything you do has to benefit yourself. But is it just benefiting one person? And is that person exploiting a lot of people in the same way? Is that person on some kind of power trip? I remember I wasn't at work one day. When I came in on the Monday, I was well, I was out of sick for a couple of weeks. When I came back, I was nominated to be the fire responder. I'm like, who nominated me? The same person. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, well, does this person see herself as you know, my boss, is that what she aspires to? She, she sees me and she wants to kind of control me and tell me what to do. And this is her way of doing it. I can imagine her in the meeting saying, um, oh yes, I'll, I'll ask so-and-so. I'm, I'm sure I can get her to do it. Because that is her nature. That is her personality. Like I said, you know, when you're volunteering, yeah, you're volunteering and you're supposed to be helping out. And, you know, these little organisations, you try to help out as much as possible. But these people with power play, they really get my go. And I don't like feeling manipulated, whether or not they're doing it intentionally or not. I believe these people 
people do it intentionally. The manipulators, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And I believe they know, you know, by doing that, they're banking on someone feeling guilty and saying yes. So all I'm saying, peeps, is that, you know, when somebody asks you to do something, just see what it is, how they ask you, see if they're trying to be a bit clever. And you can decide whether or not you want to do it, but at least you have given it consideration. You're not just, you haven't kind of been manipulated into doing it. And then afterwards you're thinking, why the hell did I say yes? Why the hell did I agree to do that? I don't even want to do it. I know lots of people who, who find themselves in positions where they said yes, they're going to do something. And afterwards they don't even know why they said yes. And they don't want to do it. And I, I think last week, what was the situation? There was something that happened last week and somebody asked me to do something. And I decided that I would stop and think whether or not I wanted to do it. Now, I don't normally do that. Somebody asked me to do something, I'm the type of person, so yeah, of course, no problem. But I'm more aware now. I'm a bit, I'm much more conscious. And so I thought to myself, do I want to do it? And then I thought, no, I don't. And I just said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. It's like something even as simple as um, going to the gym. You'll get people say, oh, you know, come to the gym you know, you'll really lose weight and, you know, you can get some exercise and it'd be really good for you. And really, they're just looking for company to go to the gym. They need the motivation. And if you go with them, they feel they have more motivation. It's got nothing to do with you losing weight. And then you end up going to the gym, you end up taking out a subscription you don't really want. You don't even end up going after a while. So when you're agreeing to do something, just think about whether it's something you intended to do whether it's something you want to do, whether it's something that is good for you, or whether it's something that's going to benefit somebody else and leave you um, down, in, down, down, feeling down then afterwards, feeling resentful afterwards. That is the key. You don't want to feel resentful afterwards. Incidentally, I forgot to talk about my glasses. I've got um, infection in my eye, so therefore... Um, I don't really want the glare of the PC and I can't wear my contact lenses and so that's why I've got dark glasses. So I won't be doing it for very long. My eye has gone really, really red. I don't know what's caused it, but anyway, not to worry. I can see, blessed Father. So that's the most important thing. Yeah, so getting back to why we say yes. Anyway, I wrote down my few little notes. Have you ever wondered why you end up feeling put upon? Do, do you do things more out of reaction than out of a well thought out plan? Um, it's so easy to say, yes, I'll do that, depending on how someone's approached you. And remember, some people are masters at getting what they want. I mean, when you think about salespeople, that's what they're trained to do. They're trained to make you say yes, even when you don't even have the money to buy it. That is what they're trained to do. And if you look at the majority of people, I'm not talking about those, well, could be people in your home but if you think about the majority of people who are trained to get what they want out of you just because they've studied you they know your weak spots they know how you work they know your triggers and they know how to get you to say yes so think about it think about their approach think about what they're saying is it kind of to sweet you up some people they sweet you up and then they ask you for a favour. That's what they do. Oh, they sweet you up and then they, they want something else. They want you to say, agree to something. So just be careful why you're saying yes. When you say yes, make sure it's something you want to do and you're happy to do. Even if it's putting yourself out, you could still feel happy to do it, but you've considered it first. You haven't just reacted. Um... When somebody asks you to do something, do not react, wait, count to three and ask yourself, do I need to say yes? 
Why am I agreeing? Who am I doing this for? Is this something I want to do? Your first reaction is usually the real you. And sometimes when somebody asks me to do something, I'm just like, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Especially at work. I come every bloody five minutes. Oh, man, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you help me with that? That's a, that's a different scenario because, you know, I'm there and I'm employed. I'm employed to do a job. And even though my job doesn't include helping every Tom, Dick and Harry that asks me just because I have, I'm a bit IT savvy, it doesn't mean I do kind of oblige them. That's a, I think that's a different scenario. I'm talking about people who kind of rob you of um, things that you don't want to do that take up a lot of your time. Um, I was listening to um, one video where this man wanted a woman I don't think there was in a relationship I don't know I don't know what it was but this man wanted this woman to wake up at four o'clock and pick him up from the station and it would have meant her going out of her way not only to wake up and she normally walks her dog so she would have had to wake up at four o'clock and go to pick him up and then bring him back home and then take out her dog and then and you know she did it but then she came back and she was saying oh I don't know why I did it why didn't he think of me when he was asking me why didn't he think oh she's got work in the morning I can't really wake her up at this time of the morning I'll take a cab so what are the alternatives for that person to get help especially if it's inconveniencing you and taking you out of your way. Another lady told me, um, I know it's her daughter, but she said um, her daughter called her up and um, said she was, I don't know if she was at an airport or if she was, forget where she was, but it was about one o'clock in the morning. And she had, no, it was airport, it was Gatwick. And this lady lived in Caddington. And two o'clock in the morning, either one or two o'clock in the morning, the daughter calls her up and says, oh, um, can you come and pick me up, mum? And she said, oh, you know, I've, you know, it's a long, it's, take, it's a three, it was a three hour drive, even that hour of the morning. Personally, I would have just said, look, take a cab, 50 pounds but maybe they wouldn't have had the 50 pounds but my point is is that you know you have to think even when it's your children are they taking the pee Do, are you always at their beck and call and not only her daughter's beck and call but her friend's beck and call because not only did she have to pick up her daughter and bring her home she ended up taking about the three or four other friends of the daughter dropping them off to their individual houses and uh, Maybe I'm on a different planet. Maybe I'm selfish. Maybe this is something that you do if you are a good person. But I think it's something that I think that people take advantage. That girl knew she was um, coming in at, at the airport. She knew what time. She and her four friends should have put the money together. At four people, even if it was 50 quid for the cap, four of them. That's just over a tenner each. They should have just said, put themselves together, put that money together and found their way to Caddington. Not wake their mum up that hour of the morning and say, oh mum, we're stranded, come and pick us up. And then she gets up and goes. I don't think the mother was bothered. But for me, I don't think you're setting a good example for your children. I think you should be uh, training them to um, think, uh, be considerate and plan better when you're coming home. And if you've missed a plane or if you've missed something, you should have you should have a contingency plan so that if you are late and you miss the bus, okay, we've, we've all put aside a tenner or 20 pounds for the end of the journey, that will get us home. Some people don't think like that. Even if I've got my train fare, I always think, oh my God, Supposing the trains are on strike, supposing something happens, make sure you have some extra money in your bag so that worst case scenario, you can get home. 
You don't go waking people up out of their bed two, three o'clock in the morning to drive three hours one way and three hours back and that person has to go to work. Anyway, um, a lot of people, the reason why they don't say no is they rationalise. Um, how, long, how will it look if I say no? How will I be viewed if I say no? Will I be viewed as uncooperative? Will I be viewed as selfish? Will I be viewed as being obstructive and unhelpful? Like that woman that sent me that email designed to prompt me to help in reception. You know, I would come over as obstructive and, unhelp and unhelpful. I mean, even though I said I couldn't do it, I didn't can't just say I couldn't do it. I just said, well, I've got A, B, C, D and E to do and there's only me, so I'm very sorry. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you have to know why you're refusing and why you are accepting. Don't refuse out of um, resentment. Don't refuse out of rebelliousness. Don't refuse out of... Um, just to be obstinate and stubborn. That's not what I'm saying. Some people are naturally giving. Some people are naturally helpful. If your spirit tells you to help, you help. But I'm just saying, don't react and don't feel as though you have to just because someone's asked you. That is my point. What else? Assertiveness versus aggressive. Sometimes people say no and it's all in the tone. Now, like I said, I could have said to that lady, no, I'm not helping out in reception. Go and find someone else. I could have said that. Or I could say, I'm really sorry. Um, I'm, on, I'm on standby for an emergency situation. Um, I've got a deadline to meet. And um, I'm sorry, I would help you if I could, but I can't do it. That way, you know, it's just in the manner. You know, you can refuse and you can, you, even if you feel put upon, even if you know they're taking the pee, you don't have to get um, angry and resentful. You just deal with it in a way that feels good to you. So... That's why I said assertiveness versus aggressiveness. You can just say, um, I'm sorry, I needed more notice. Um, please, or like what well, I intend to say if she does it again, I intend to say, listen, can you please speak to me first before you nominate me for anything? Speak to me first. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Now that's being assertive. Now if I go to her and say, uh, why the hell would you, did you nominate me? You need to ask me first. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? There's two different ways. The first one, you're kind of putting her in her place because out of respect, she should have spoke to me first and said, look, um, we, we're looking for a fire responder. Um, how do you feel about helping out in this? That's a decent thing to do. Not be on some power trip and say, oh, you know, I, I, I'll, 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 get her to, I'll get her to be a fire responder. Don't worry, I'll send her an email. Or I'll get her to cover reception. I'll just, and the other day, um, she was uh, nominating me and this other woman for some other thing. We both just said no. Just like, you know, some people, they just, you know, they've got no control in their homes. So they take it out on colleagues at work. They need to feel important. They need to feel powerful. The only person who's more powerful than me is God. In. So that's all I've got to say about that. Um, if you react with a yes straight away, you'll never know who the real you is. And that is what this is about, finding out who the real you is. The real you might not even be nice. The real you might not be helpful. They might not be considerate. They might be, um, a, you know, they might be horrible. It doesn't matter. It's the real you. Now, when you do things just to please people or because of the way it might look, that is not the real you. And that's why I'm saying some people will say yes and genuinely don't mind helping out. 
other people do it because they're worried about somebody else's opinion. They're trying to people please. And that is what you don't need to do. You need to stop and think, am I doing this because I genuinely want to? Or am I doing this because I feel I have to? Two of them are totally different. If you're doing it because you feel you have to and you don't really want to, you need to be honest and say, I'm sorry, I can't help out this time. Um, what else is there? When somebody asks you a favour and you react, you will never know who you're doing it for. That's the same kind of principle. Um, personal experience, I've done that. That was me being nominated, so those are my personal experiences. Um, what else is there? I've said about the control freaks. Consider why you agree to do things. Is it the way they ask you? Do you feel guilty or obligated? Some people just feel guilty. They just feel as though they should. Oh, I better say yes, you know, or else she's going to have a go, or he's going to moan at me, or he's not going to speak to me, or he's going to, you know, there's going to be a bad atmosphere. And you don't really want to do it. That means you're not being true to yourself. You're not really discovering who you are because you're too busy people pleasing. Like I said, the real you might not be nice. If I'm left to my own devices. I might not be such a wonderful person after all. I might be very selfish. But it does mean that when I do something, I do it because I want to do it, not because I feel I have to, not because somebody has that expectation of me and not because I feel guilty. So be careful not to become victims to narcissists, control freaks and manipulators because by rescuing, helping and agreeing against your better judgment and without due consideration on how it will impact you and your time, you will fall prey to predators and perpetrators. And that's the thing. You know, when you're thinking about there are so many narcissists around and you are the type to say yes, you are the one that falls prey to them. So you do have to be careful. And, you know, this could be male or female because narcissists come in both genders and victims come in all gen both genders or all genders. So when you are um, saying yes, or you know, especially with narcissists, they they... That is what they're looking for. They're looking for the people pleasers. They're looking for the people who are, have a so, who have a soft heart, who was who are genuine, who are kind, people who are understanding. That's who narcissists hold, you know, hone in on. And they'll ask you questions and they'll see how you respond. And if you're the type of person to say, "Oh, yeah, I don't mind helping you," or they say, "I can't get up to your house. I don't mind picking you up." Or they say to you, um, I haven't got any money. I don't mind. I'll give you some money if you need money for that. Those are the people narcissists are looking for. They're looking for people they can exploit. They're looking for people who they can use. And when you're a yes person, you will be drawn into their net. And once you're in their net, you know, you can't get out. Very, very difficult to get out. So try to be assertive. Learn to say no. Learn to try and understand yourself, what your true needs are, who the real you looks like, the good, the bad and the ugly. We're not all lovely people. We might think we're all lovely. We might think we're all cooperative just because you help here and there. But what are you saying to yourself when you're helping? Are you, are you talking, you know, saying something behind someone's back? Are you grumbling underneath your breath? Oh, why, the hell am I, why the hell did I ask to do this? Why did I? Why did I agree to do this? Why did I lend that person that money? Why did I um, offer to pick that person up? You have to stop doing it. I used to have this person when we used to go to a nightclub. She used to um, just sit there waiting for me to pick her up. No money for petrol. Just sit there. And, she, and you know the funny thing is, is that she didn't even invite me in. I felt like a bloody taxi cab. And I used to say, yeah, you know, I'll come and pick you up. And the first time I did it and um, I went up to the door and knocked and she said, um, I'll go back in the car. I'll be out in five or ten minutes. That was a red flag. 
and I sat in that car and I was fuming and I thought to myself, I've driven to pick you up and you're not even inviting me into your home and have me wait while you finish doing what you're doing. And we were going to this club. When she did it the second time, I said, you know what? She can ask me a third time. I just cut her off. Because people like that, you don't need. You don't need people like that. It's a user. Just want somebody to taxi her around. And like I said, I just responded and say yes. And, you know, I gave it a second chance to see if it was something untoward, maybe she was embarrassed about her home, the state of her home. I don't know. I don't know the reason why. She could have had somebody in there I don't, she doesn't want me to see. So, But when it happened the second time, and I, to be honest, I think I allowed it to happen a third time. But by the third time, I just said, no, this is her pattern. She just thinks she's got a cab. And I thought, no way. And not even, even with a cab, you pay a cab, don't you? So you come, you, I pick you up, drop you all the way down to London, 26 miles, and you don't even say, look, here's a fiver towards petrol. Mm -mm, that ain't happening. So yeah, all I'm saying is that sometimes we do respond spontaneously and we do agree to do things spontaneously without thinking about what we really want for ourselves and whether or not it's good for us. So I just want to put you on the alert and that's all for now. Bye bye.